What's up, everyone? Welcome to a brand new episode of Game Nights. This show is brought to you by Wizards of the Coast. We have a very exciting game. It is thematic, but I'm not going to give away the theme right here. Before we get into it, we got to give a big shout out to our sponsors, cardkingdom.com slash command. That is the place to go to order your magic product, singles, anything at all. You know your magic players. You're going to buy a magic product anyway. You may as well use our Card Kingdom affiliate link when you do to get all of the magic cards that you want, plus support all of our content. Plus, Card Kingdom is the best place to go to order your magic cards because they are one big retailer with a huge inventory which means when you put in that big order with a ton of cards to fill out your deck list it all comes back to you (gasps) in a single package heck yes it's very efficient it's very fast and they give them to you in great condition and they've got all the cards that you need so again cardkingdom.com slash command and you're supporting our content of course when you get those cards you're going to want to sleeve them up keep them protected and make them look great on your battle station ultrapro.com slash command or just ultra pro product at your lgs you got playmats you've got deck bosses you've got sleeves you've got dice you've got so many ways to make your battlefield awesome so head on over you can use that affiliate link and sometimes we've got great deals on their store you can also just buy some ultra pro product from your lgs support your local game store and get the things that you need There's There's always some great deals. I picked up a lot of stuff this last year, and you'll definitely not be disappointed. And then finally, there's only a couple days left on this, but our Kickstarter sleeves are still available right now. There's going to be a link in the show notes. If you want to get your hands on these three really cool designs, you want to show off your fandom of game nights and support of our channel, there's a link to a Kickstarter. You really got to get in there and lock in your order because as with all of our merchandise, once the Kickstarter is over, we are never going to sell this stuff again. Mm-hmm. You might be able to win one from a giveaway, but that's going to be about it at this point. Yeah, so, very hard. Yeah, these designs are really, really sweet. Three uh, different designs. You get one of each of the designs with each pledge. So check it out. Kickstarter, is uh, the link is in the show notes below. It is only running for a couple more days and when it's over, it's done forever. All right, with that said, we have Ooh. a very cool theme. You may have guessed it a little bit from uh, the background here out the window. But in case you haven't, well, you're about to find out. Let's play. How's it, everybody? Welcome back to a brand new episode of Game Nights. On this one... We're gonna try something different. We're playing as the bad guys. The Phyrexians are the big bads. They're magic's oldest enemy. And each faction of Phyrexians have nasty leaders called Praetors. Today, each of our decks will be led by one of these powerful Praetors clad in their unique showcase frames. The ones we chose are from recent history who have invaded various planes to execute their secret plans. We don't know what they're up to, but it must be something evil. So my commander is from a set that doesn't come out until next year. It is Elish Norn, Mother of Machines, from Phyrexia, All Will Be One. Does the fiction scare you, my child? This deck is all about powerful enter the battlefield effects and efficient two for one removal and ways to blink my board so I can use it again and again to clear my path to victory. And the commander I'll be playing is Shieldred the Apocalypse. Her forces crave power at any cost. I've got a bunch of pieces in my deck to make everyone draw extra cards. My draws are rewarded and their draws are punished. And as I draw my way through my deck, I'll find the tools I need to turn that slow, painful suffering into a swift, decisive end. I will be leading the vicious swarms of Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. The Green Phyrexian faction is all about survival of the fittest and natural selection. So I'll be making my creatures huge with a bunch of plus one plus one counters. Because Vorinclex is gonna double all these counters. With an overgrown army and some double counter planeswalkers, I'll stomp my way to the win. The deck I'm playing today is Urabrask, Heretic Praetor. The red faction is all about freedom, chaos, and impulse. That's why my deck is full of impulsive card draw, plus plenty of payoffs for casting my cards from exile. Then with all my card advantage, I'll build an aggressive engine and tear my opponents to shreds. All right, let's get to the game. Let's say see you later to the other Praetors. Shieldred's apocalypse is nigh. Y'all ready for this? 
Welcome to the table, everyone, or should I say, Phyrexia. Yeah, it got all spooky in here. It's not just me this time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like everyone here has already been knighted, so there's only one thing left to say. Only, only one, one may stand. stand. All right, everybody ready? You bet. Let's do this. Let's go. I will draw for turn, and then I will play a Myriad Landscape tapped. Jimmy, go ahead. All righty. I will draw my card for turn. Second best card in the game. I'll play a Mountain. Wait, what's the first best card in the game? Soaring. Oh. oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Island. <laughs> Vomit in my mouth. <laughs> and pass from you, lady. Oh, all right. I will draw my card. I'll play a Swamp, third best card in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and then I will tap that and play Evolved Sleeper. Ooh. I really like this card on turn one, because it's really gonna take a lot of investment over time to get it up to that final mode. So any extra mana that I have here or there, I can put into this. Plus, my little guy's a sleeper agent, so maybe they won't see it as a problem. That's it for me, I'm gonna pass to you, Ashlyn. I'll draw for turn, and I'm gonna just play a happy little forest here and pass. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. I'll play a planes, and then I'll tap two, and I will play a mind stone. Wow. The classic commander start, two mana rock. <laughs> Go ahead, Jimmy. All right, I'll draw my card for turn. Oh! Uh -oh. Better not be a soul ring. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, a classic start, you say, Josh? Well, let me raise that. A couple more mana. I will play a soul ring. <laughs> Wow. Then I'm going to cast Liquid Metal Torque. Oops. And then I'll pass turn to you, lady. He has five mana on board right now. I literally have a single forest. I feel like Jimmy's set up really well for the next few turns, whereas I'm just still trying to build. All right, I will untap and draw my card for turn. I'll play a Swamp, and then I will tap two and cast Everflowing Chalice. Ooh. Not bad. I only kicked it once, so it only comes in with one counter. Yep. Getting this card out means I'm perfectly on track to get my commander out on turn three. And that's exactly what my game plan is, to trigger my commander as many times as possible. So everybody watch out, because next turn, Shieldred's coming in hot. All right, I'll move to combat, and Jimmy, since you got to play Soul Ring, I, I will hit you for one. Okay, no blockers. I'll take one and go to 39. That seems fair. I'll pass to you, Ashlyn. All right, I will draw for turn. And then I'm just gonna play another forest, and I wanna bring out my friend, Sakura Tribe Elder. Steve! Steve! This card is great early because I want to ramp as fast as possible so that I can get into my mid to late game. My deck's all about synergy, so it's gonna take some time to get that set up, but once it is, it's going to be pretty difficult to stop. And I'll pass. Okay, I will untap, I will draw. I'm gonna start by playing my land, then I'm gonna tap two, and I'm gonna play Liquid Metal Torque. Oh. oh! A mirror match. So I got really lucky because I drew this mana rock this turn, and that leaves me with two mana open to activate my Myriad Landscape before my next turn. So instead of ramping once, this kinda is gonna allow me to ramp twice, which is nice. And I'll do it for me, pass turn. All right, I will untap and I will draw for turn. And then I will tap a Soaring and a Mountain and play Lelia, the Blade Reforged. All right, everyone, remember your trick. Ooh. This card is great because it does exactly what my deck's trying to do. The more I can impulsive draw, the better, because my deck has lots of interesting ways to synergize with it. Not only that, the extra cards really help me. It has haste, so Lady, I'm gonna go to combat and I'll swing at you. When she attacks, I will exile the top card in my library. It's a runaway steam kit. That's bad. <laughs> and I can play that card this turn. Runaway steam kit, I think if you haven't seen it in play, you don't understand how powerful it is. What happens is you cast a few spells, it gives you the mana to cast some more spells, but as you're casting, it gets more counters and allows you to cast even more spells. His next turn or the turn after that could be incredible, so I'm really not happy about it. When I exile that card, I'm gonna put a plus one, plus one counter on Lelia. <laughs> So she's now a 3-3. Three, three. Hmm. All right, lady, any blocks? No blocks. I will take three, going to 37. All right, my second main phase, I will play a land for turn, and then I will tap two mana and play my runaway steamkin. Whoa there, might run away with this game. <laughs> All right, that's it. I'll pass the turn to you, lady. I'm feeling really good about my spot right now. I have so much extra mana in my mana rocks. I've got everything I need, and all I have to do is press go, and the sparks are gonna fly. Oh, I'm cruising. All right, I will untap, and I will draw for my turn. I will play my land for turn, and then let's bring out my commander, Shieldred the Apocalypse. 
<laughs> so we take damage when we draw cards now? Yes. No! Oh, sure do. That's the most anti me card. I'm still going to draw a lot of cards. You can draw as many cards as you want. I love that. Yeah, it's interesting because I love card draw, and Shieldred punishes that. So you would think I would dislike this card. However, my guess is that Lady's going to play a bunch of cards that draw us all cards. So for that part, I'm happy about it. I could use the help. And that is going to be it. I'll pass to you, Ashlyn. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to get my commander out on turn three, and that's exactly where we are. It does put a big target on me because it's a huge threat, but that is absolutely a risk I'm willing to take. Okay, I'll untap. Wait, you're not going to crack Steve? No. I have other plans. Oh, Ooh. I like that. I don't. And I'll go to draw for turn. When you draw your card for turn, shield is going to trigger, and you're going to lose two left. That's right. Okay, going to 38. Thanks, lady. My gift to you. All right, I'll play a forest and play Rishkar Pima Renegade. Oh, it all makes sense now. And I'll put a counter on Sakura Tribe Elder and Rishkar. All right, lots of manas. That's my turn. Go ahead. I feel pretty good about this. I'm setting myself up to ramp into some really big stuff in the next couple turns. So I'm hoping that I can kind of sit back and go under the radar from here. All right, on your end step, I'm going to tap two and sacrifice my mirrored landscape. And I will find two snow-covered planes. <laughs> and those will come into the battlefield tapped. Chilly. And then I will go to my turn, and I will untap, and I will draw. On your draw, Josh, Shieldred will trigger, and you're gonna lose two life. I go to 38. All right, I'm gonna tap five, and I will play my commander, the new Elish Norn, Mother of Machines. Your child. Ooh. Ooh. And she's in a cool black frame. We call her mom. <laughs> <laughs> My commander's here. It is the new Elish Norn. I think it's pretty obvious what I'm going to be doing. I'm just playing a lot of permanents that have entered the battlefield effects because I'll get to double them. So I'm still setting up. I'm going to make some cool plays later, but there's a problem on Jimmy's board that I feel like I have to get rid of. Okay, and then I'm pretty scared about the Runaway Steamkin because I have seen that card do many bad things. Are you going to kill it? I think I have to. So I'm going to cast Path to Exile, and I will target the Runaway Steamkin. Yep, no responses. I will search through my library for a mountain and put it on the battlefield tapped. I'm excited. It means I don't miss a land drop in a weird way. <laughs> like I'm about to. Yeah. <laughs> and that is all I can do, so Jimmy, go ahead. The thing that sucks here is I pass the turn, and you may have noticed I miss my land drop. Luckily, with the mirrored landscape, I'm technically even, but I got to draw some cards, or I just will not have a chance in this game. All right, let's go ahead and untap, and I'll draw a card for turn. On your draw, Jimmy. Children's going to trigger. I'll go to 37. All right, first things first, I'll move to combat, and Ashlyn, I'm going to swing at you with Lelia. When Lily attacks, I'll exile the top card of my library. It's a Shatter Skull Smashing, which I can play as a land. Nice. So Lelia will get a plus one, plus one counter, and it is now a 4-4. Four, four. Mm. Go to blocks. I'll take four. Okay. Going to 34. Okay, the card I exiled is actually an MDFC, and the other side is a land, so I will play that. And I will pay three life to have it enter the battlefield untapped. Going to 34. Sure. And then I'm going to tap all eight of my mana and oh, cast what? two Ooh. cards. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the first is Tectonic Giant. Hmm. And the second is Wild Magic Sorcerer. Those work nicely together. Tectonic Giant can do a ton of damage to my opponents, or it exiles cards from the top of my library. If I go to combat with this, I have a ton of options, and I can definitely make sure that my game plan keeps moving along. Jamie's already casting more spells than any of us each turn. <laughs> and getting another one for free, that's really strong. This introduces quite a bit of chaos into the game, but you have to think it's going to be good for Jimmy no matter what, and not great for us. All right, that's it for me. Pass turn to you, lady. All right, I will untap and draw for turn, and as I draw a card, I gain two life because children. Nice. That doesn't seem fair. <laughs> it's very fair. All right, I will play a Swamp for turn, and then I will use two, and I'll play Howling Mine. Not good. So normally, Howling Mine is a risky card to play because everybody else is gonna have more cards to play before I do. But I'm just trying to get them to trigger my commander as many times as possible. So I'll kill them before they even get to use the cards. Yeah, it's funny because it feels like Jimmy and Ashlyn kind of groan when Howling Mine comes out. And I get it, you're going to take damage off Shieldred. But I'm like, yeah, more card draw. Two life is not that bad. If she wants to give me cards and charge me two life for it, I'm happy about this. I will use my remaining three and play Read the Bones. Nice. So I'll scry two. Hmm. Okay. 
I'm gonna put this one on top and I'll put the other one on the bottom of my library and then I'll draw two cards. Nice. So I'll lose two life from Read the Bones but then I'll gain four life because of Shieldred. So I'll end up two at 41. Not bad. All right, I think that's it for me. I'm gonna pass to you, Ashlyn. All right, I will untap my cards and I'll go to draw. Don't forget, because of Howling Mine, you draw two cards. Awesome. And that means you're gonna lose four life. I'll go to 30. Ugh. <laughs> so I could play my commander here, but I feel like that's going to draw me a lot of aggro that I definitely don't need right now. So I'm just gonna ramp and get some blockers and hope someone else deals with Shieldred before my next turn. All right, I'm going to play Cultivate. Okay. And I'll find two forests. I'll put one in my hand and the other on the battlefield tapped. Sweet. So because of Rishkar, my creatures with plus one, plus one counters can tap for mana. Cool. So I'm gonna tap the two of them and this forest and I'll cast Runic Armasaur. Ooh, normally this card is pretty good, but in this situation, I don't know how I feel about it. No one's got activated abilities on their commander, so this doesn't have a high likelihood of drawing Ashlyn any cards. So all it's doing is just being a really good blocker. That's my turn, go ahead. All right, I will untap and I will draw two cards because of Howling Mine. Mm -hmm. And then I will take four damage because of Shieldred, going to 34. All right, I'm going to play my land for turn, which is Hall of Heliod's Generosity. Nice. I don't even have an enchantment on the battlefield or in my graveyard at the moment. But you know, things can change. Let's see, I do want to draw cards, but I don't want to do it with Shieldred out. So I think I'm gonna tap three and I'm gonna play Skyclave Apparition. Oh. So when it enters the battlefield, my commander will cause it to trigger twice. Oh. I see. So I'm gonna exile two things. Mm -hmm. So I think this basically just shows off very simply why Elish Norn is good and how powerful it is. Getting rid of two cards by using one card. Value. And thing number one will definitely be Wild Magic Sorcerer. Ooh. And the second target will be Shieldred. So those both get exiled. All right, Shieldred will go to the command zone. Oh man, Josh is targeting my stuff again. That's two things he's removed from me now. This is exactly what I was worried about. Shieldred is a huge threat. She was not long for this world. But the whole point of this deck is to have my commander out. You remove it and I'll play it again. All right, and then I will tap four and I'm gonna play Wedding Ring. Oh! <laughs> uh, so this will also trigger twice. Ooh. Because of Elishdorn. Yeah, this is a super interesting card because it is going to give a lot of cards to two of my opponents. I'm not really sure if this is the best idea, but it's going to create a lot of fireworks, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to propose a marriage to... Me! Ashlyn Rose <laughs> and Lady Danger. I do. No, you have to accept on Phyrexian. Oh, okay. That's okay. how Phyrexian laws work. <laughs> <laughs> So the great thing is that when any of us draw cards, we're all gonna draw cards. Yeah, and when I gain life, everybody else is gonna gain life. We all win. I don't like you guys very much right now. <laughs> then I'll go to combat, and Lady Danger, you're at the most life. I will swing my Vigilant Elish Norn at you for four. Oh. Ignoring the fact that we just got married, you know, I still have to deal damage to my opponents when I can. She won't hold it against me probably, right? I don't think this is how marriages work. I could be wrong. <laughs> okay, I will take four. Going to 37. And then, Jimbo, go ahead. All right, well, with the wedding bells still fresh in my ears, I will draw not one, but two cards for turn. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is tap for five mana, and I'm gonna cast one of my favorite cards of all time. It's Neheb the Eternal. The path to eternity is paved in Lazotep and blood. Hey. Um, My tectonic giant can do nine damage to the entire table when it swings, and that's nine free mana to me. Or I get to exile more cards and see more cards to play, but then I won't have as much mana. I'm in a really interesting situation here because I don't actually know which one I want to do. Do I get less mana but see more cards, or see more cards and get less mana? I wish I could have both. Okay, I'm gonna go to combat and I'm gonna swing Tectonic Giant and Lelia at you, lady. All right. So both Lelia and Tectonic Giant will trigger on attack. What are you choosing for Tectonic Giant? I'm gonna exile two cards. And with Lelia, I will also exile one card. So I'll do the Lelia trigger first, and then here's the two for Tectonic Giant. Wow. Now of those two, I have to choose one I can play this turn. Those are both scary. I'll pick Torbrand. All right, and you just cast till end of turn? Yep. That'll trigger Lelia's second ability twice giving her two more plus one plus one counters. 
So she is now a 6-6. Six, six. Jeez. That's nine total damage coming at you, lady. I will block Lelia with my Evolved Sleeper, and I will take three. Going to 34. Okay, so the Sleeper will die? Yes. Okay, in my second main phase, Neheb the Eternal will trigger, and I'm going to add three mana for the three life that my opponents have lost this turn. Good job blocking, lady. <laughs> Do what I can. I'm gonna use two of my floating, and I'm gonna cast a braid, and I'm gonna target your wedding ring, lady. I feel very attacked right now. Yeah, sorry, not sorry. Looking around the table, Lady is in the best spot to benefit from this marital relationship. And so that's why I think her wedding ring has got to go. So I guess when we asked everybody to speak now or forever hold their peace, Jimmy was just a little late. Hello everyone, just a quick note to say that Lady Danger and I have recently separated and I wish her nothing but health and happiness going forward. This is a private matter and I have not made nor will I be making any further comments to journalists or media outlets. We appreciate you respecting our privacy at this time. And I still have one floating. I'll use that to cast Torbran, Thane of Redfell. Uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. I've got all the combo pieces assembled on my board. I'm ready to pop off. My Tectonic Giant's gonna do a ton of damage now with that Torbrand, and the Heb's just gonna boost me up with even more mana than before. I'm gonna be unstoppable if people can't slow me down. That's gonna do it for me. Pass turn to you, lady. All right, I'm going to untap, draw for turn, and because of Howling Mine, I will draw a second card. And then I will tap everything. I will bring out Shieldred the Apocalypse. Yay. She was great the first time, but now with the wedding rings out, she's gonna be even better. On Ashlyn's turn, because of the Howling Mine, she's gonna draw two cards, which means Josh will draw two cards. Then rinse and repeat on Josh's turn. Shieldred is mildly more concerning than she was before. I'd still rather draw four cards than one card, though. So I can't be that mad about it. All right, Ashlyn, I'll pass the turn to you. Okay, I'm gonna untap and I'll go to draw for turn. <laughs> and I'll draw another card. Oh, and then I'll take four. Going to 26. Okay, and then, because we're married, the wedding ring will trigger when you draw your cards, so I will also draw two cards. And then Shieldred will also trigger for me, and I will also take four damage. Yikes. In sickness and in health. <laughs> Mostly sickness at this point. Yes. Yeah. All right. I'm going to tap all my mana, and I'll bring out Vorinclex Monstrous Raider. <laughs> like ripping flesh, I love it. Up until this point of the game, I've been trying to really hold back all my payoff cards. So next turn, I'll be ready to amplify all of those effects to give me a really powerful board state very quickly. I'm gonna move to combat, and Lady, I'm gonna send Vorinclex at you. I'm not gonna block here. I'll take six, going to 28. All right, that's all I can do, uh, Josh. Go ahead. All right. Untap all these things, and then Howling Mine, draw two, Shieldred, take four, go to 26, and then Ashlyn. Thanks, I will draw two, and take four, going to 22. Eesh. Ouch. You should have listened to your parents and never gotten involved with me. <laughs> but he had that cool car. That value, though. That cool though. card. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to pay a white, and I'm gonna cast On Thin Ice. Ooh. So I'm gonna target the snow-covered plains that I just tapped, and when it enters the battlefield, I'll exile two creatures because of Elishdorn. Whoa. Thing number one will definitely be Neheb. Come on. And the second target will be Shieldred. Ugh. <laughs> Yeah, Neheb has to go because Jimmy just getting 15 mana and with all the extra cards he has access to, it feels like a really bad idea. And getting rid of the shielder does save me eight damage per rotation. So I guess it's the next best target. So those both get XL. And I'm gonna put shielded back in the command zone. I thought Jimmy was a target. I thought Jimmy had scarier things than I did, but clearly I was wrong. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to grind through Josh removing my commander every time I play it. Okay, after that, I am going to tap for five and cast Regal Caracol. Oh! Kitties! So that's gonna trigger twice because of Elishnorn, and I will get four cat creature tokens with lifelink. 
Oh yeah, that's bad. I'm actually really excited that the cats have lifelink. Because of the shielder triggers, you know, my life's getting a little low and this is gonna be a way to bolster them. I can just throw these cats away. I don't really care what happens, but I do want the life gain. Normally this would be pretty scary, but because of the wedding ring, whenever Josh gains life, I'm gonna be gaining life. So I'm kinda happy to see some lifelinky kitties. And then I will go to combat. Jimmy, I'm gonna swing the Elishnorn at you and Lady the Skyclave Apparition at you. I'll take two. Going to 26. I'll take four. Going to 30. Commander damage. That's true. And then second main, I will play Charming Prince. Ooh. So I will choose the option of exile another target creature I own and return it to the battlefield. But again, I get to do that twice. Jeez. So I'm gonna target my Regal Caracal and my Skyclave Apparition. So those will get exiled. Wow. Wow. So Charming Prince would normally blink one thing and you would get its ability once. But with Elish Norn, it blinks two things and you get those ETBs twice. So it kind of 4Xs my board here, which is nuts. When your Skyclave Apparition gets exiled, I get a 4-4 token. That is true. And I do not get a token because I put my commander back in the command zone. Yeah, I'm getting a 4-4 spirit here, but that apparition is coming right back. It's probably gonna target even more of my stuff, which, ugh, just sucks. I'll go to my end step. Regal Caracal and Skyclave Apparition will return to the battlefield. I'll make four more cats. Yikes. Again, there are two twos with lifelink, so now I have eight. If anyone is looking to adopt a cat, head on over to Josh Lee Kwai's board, because he's got plenty. And Skyclave Apparition will exile two things. Sorry, Jimmy, I'm gonna target Torbran and Tectonic Giant. Jeez, all right, cool. Well, there goes my game. I get it, Josh, I get it. I'm playing the best cards at the table, you're jealous. You know what, payback is on the way. I am not gonna forgive you for this. Hey, I'm Atraxa Praetor's Voice, and I'm taking a break from holiday prep to proliferate some information about Raycon. Just like in your world, holidays on New Phyrexia can be far from perfect. Uncle Boren collects yells at blood sports on TV, while Auntie Elish preaches the machine orthodoxy at dinner. No one can agree on anything. Luckily, my go-to gift makes everyone happy. Premium audio products from Raycon. Jin Gitaxius loves getting 54 hours of battery life on his headphones while he's probing away in his lab. And Shieldred loves to blast Blightsteely Dan on her speakers. Me, I love that Raycons only cost half the price of other premium brands. And don't forget to check out Raycon's Countdown to Christmas with a new pop-up flash deal for you to take advantage of every single day. Oh great, Urobrask is here. Things are about to get political. You've heard the Praetor's voice, now get the Praetor's choice. Right now, go to buyraycon.com slash nights to get 15% off site-wide with code HOLIDAY plus free shipping. That's code HOLIDAY at buyraycon.com slash nights, nights with a K, for 15% off your Raycon purchase. Again, buyraycon.com slash nights. Greetings, Shadow Walker. I'm Satoru Umazawa. With my guidance, you can get the drop on anyone. Even a Blightsteel Colossus can become a ninjutsu master in my care. But to my shame, I almost let an enemy sneak up on me. The most sinister of foes, male pattern baldness. That's why I signed up for Keeps, the affordable and stress-free way to stay ahead of hair loss. Now, many fierce warriors stand strong and bald, but I want a chance to save my hair. And Keeps made it easy with convenient virtual doctor consultations and 24-7 support. Then, medications were sent straight to the Tawashi Undercity, so I never had to leave my hideout unprotected. With Keeps, treatment started only $10 a month, just half of what I'd pay at the Imperial Cyber Pharmacy, and their packaging is as discreet as a skilled, silent assassin. But, as any ninja knows, you have to act fast, as treatments take time to see results. So, when it comes to your hair, be sure to strike first, save more, and spend less with Keeps. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash nights to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash nights with a K to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash nights. And Skyclave Apparition will exile Torbran and Tectonic Giant. Jeez, all right, cool. Well, there goes my game. Maybe all right, Jimmy, go ahead. Wipe, Jimmy. I do need a board wipe, but I've lost a lot of my draw outlets there. All right, so I will untap, and I will draw two cards for my turn. Interesting. We love interesting. Okay, I'm going to tap for five mana, and I'll cast my commander, Urabrask, Heretic Praetor. Whoa. Nice. Jimmy 
playing as Commander is terrible for me. It impulse draws everybody's first card draw, which means I wouldn't get a shielded trigger. That is absolute butt. For me to win here, I need to let them fight each other until I can get Shieldred back out and make a big impact with it quickly. And then I will tap three mana and I'm gonna cast a Chaos Warp targeting your planes. That has On Thin Ice enchanted to it. Oh, interesting. Because that will get rid of On Thin Ice, right? Yeah, it can yeah. do lands, yeah. This is brutal. Because Jimmy targeted the land and not the enchantment itself, it's going to fall off. So the only possible hiccup in this is if Josh hits something crazy off the top. So On Thin Ice is going to fall off, and I'll shuffle this snow-covered planes into my library. Yep. My deck has a lot of permanents because Elish Norn is based on the triggers of permanents. So I think I have a high chance of at least hitting something off of the flip here. And if it's a land, I at least sort of break even. And then I will flip the top card of my library, and if it's a permanent, it comes directly into play. Yep. It is Solemn Simulacrum. <laughs> you got your land back! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get two. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. So, yep, that's going to trigger twice, and I will go find two lands and put those on the battlefield tapped. And when On Thin Ice goes away, I also get mine to have the Eternal back. Nice, yep. Uh, I am going to have to attack, and Lady, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Just do, like, the littlest attack. All right, Lady, I'm going to swing everything at you. What? <laughs> that is not little. When Lady attacks... That will trigger her ability. I will exile the top card of my library. It is a myriad landscape, and that's going to put another plus one, plus one counter on Lelia. Four and click says, ah, ah, ah. You only put half. Round it down, which is zero. Oh, okay, no counters go on Lelia then. I didn't even really think about the fact that Vornklex would stop Lelia from getting any more counters. Literally six is as big as I want her to get. At seven, my Elishnorn can't block anymore, so that's a nice little development. Good thing I married that lady. I mean that, Ashlyn. <laughs> uh, but that is still 14 damage going at you, lady. Well, I guess I'll take 14. Going to 12. Yikes. I'm over here fighting for my life, and here he is just throwing me into the fire for no reason. At a certain point, we need to work together against the two of them. On my second main phase, Neheb's going to give me 14 extra mana. 14 oh red my mana? my goodness. I'm going to spend four of that mana on an outpost siege. But because it's as it enters the battlefield, Elish Norn doesn't see it. Oh, nice. So I would choose Cons, which Except, will allow uh, me. Yeah, impulsive draw? Gives me impulsive draw, yeah. Okay. So I have 10 mana left floating. Yep. I'm going to cast Delayed Blast Fireball for three mana. This is going to deal two damage to each opponent and each creature they control. Oh no! Oh my! <sighs> Woof, this is the perfect answer off the top because Josh is bored and those lifelinkers were the biggest threat to me by far. So I'm really, really glad I got this board wipe just in time because if I had it, it might be game over. All right, in response, I'm going to sack my Sakura Tribe Elder. So I'll find a basic forest and put it on the battlefield tapped. Nice. All right, and then Delayed Blast Fireball resolves. Yep, two damage to each opponent and each creature they control. Ugh. I lose nothing. I lose everything except Elish Norn and my Regal Caracal. Yeah. Huh? I had a ton of creatures on the board. I was counting on those cats to gain me some life, and now I'm down to very little. The upside is I do still have Elish Norn, which is important. At least my strategy can continue. It's a setback, but I think I can recover. I do have a death trigger on my Solemn Simulacrum, so I will draw one. This is a little weird, but because I had two four drops under Skyclave Apparition, and it actually comes back as one eight eight, which is the sum of their mana values. Oh. Okay. <laughs> weird. I will not play my Myriad Landscape this turn, so I'll go to Exile and I'll pass turn to you, lady. All right, I will untap, and because of Urbrask, I will exile the first card I would draw. I can play it till end of turn. It is a swamp. And because of Howling Mine, I'll draw one card. Yep. So I will play the swamp for turn out of exile. And then I'm going to tap two and play Delphi Voidwalker. Oh. Hmm. This card is annoying because now I have to pay attention to what I allow to go into my graveyard because she's going to be getting something free and be able to use it against me. And then I'm going to tap three and cast Silver Smoke Ghoul. And then I'll use my remaining two and cast Thought Vessel. Nice. Nice. And I'll pass the turn to you, Ashley. Yeah, it seems like Lady just hasn't really been able to get going this game. We've been drawing so many cards with Howling Mine. Maybe she's just been unlucky, but her board is much smaller than everybody else's. And so is her life total. She's in trouble. 
All right, I'm gonna untap because of Urbrask, I'll exile the top card. Hey, it's a soul ring. Nice. And then I'll draw my other card for turn. Oh man, the Urbrask stops my first wedding ring draw. Yep. Okay, well, I'll draw still one card. Okay, I will play my soul ring. A lot of mana to work with. I Two, have four, so six, much mana. Eight, nine. All right, Watch let's it. just do this first. I'm gonna play Beast Whisperer. Ooh. Several of my plans have already been thwarted by Elish Norn's ability, so this is great because it's a cast trigger and gets around it. This is gonna allow me to draw a lot more cards, and with the wedding ring still out, let's hope Josh doesn't draw into anything good. I'm super happy to ride my wife's coattails and draw cards when she does. This is great. And then I'll play Elysian and carry at it. And that's gonna trigger my Beast Whisperer. So I will draw a card. Da 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 da, wedding ring will trigger. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm gonna play Guy's Cradle. Ooh, <laughs> that's a real card. So taps for five right now? Nice. Yes. So five, six, seven, eight mana to play with. All right, I'm going to play Vigor. Normally this card is really good, but with Boring Clex out, it's double as good. She's gonna be able to attack with impunity and make her stuff bigger. If I don't draw into a board wipe, I'm guaranteed to be out of this game. All right, and then that's gonna trigger Beast Whisperer. And uh, that's gonna trigger Wedding Ring. Boy, okay. this is great. All right, I'm gonna move to combat. Okay. Uh, Jimmy, I'm gonna send Vorinclex at you, and Josh, I'm gonna send Runic Armasar at you. I'm gonna block it with the Regal Caracal. And I will block your 6-6 six, six with my 8-8 eight, eight illusion. I don't want to take that damage. Really? Okay. Because of Vigor, your Runic Armor Store will get three counters. Yes, but then Vorinclex is going to double those counters. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, no! Oh, so it's an 8-11? No. Just a little 8 11. So I guess your Vorinclex will get 16 counters. Yep. Jeez. This was a really interesting choice, and Jimmy being the captain of chaos, I am not sure what he has planned. Oh no, I forgot that Ashlyn's commander is gonna double the counters for Vigor. Oh geez, this is a bad play by me because I just gave this thing plus 16, plus 16. How big is it now? 22, 22? With trample? <laughs> it's one shot. With oh trample. <laughs> oh no. So Vorinclex, 22, 22, commander damage. This is telling a very clear story, which is that I have to keep removal up at all times because that thing can kill you out of nowhere. It's, it's a problem exciting. for next turn. At least you don't take the <laughs> yeah, damage now. Yeah, it's a problem for next turn. Jeez, oh, okay. And yeah, after that, I'll uh, go ahead and pass to you. Okay, I will untap all this stuff here. Uh, because of Urbrask, I will exile the top card of my library. It's a Cathar's Crusade. Ooh. I can play that until end of turn. And then I will draw one from Howling Mine. Ah, yes, and I will also draw. I think I can not die, but... Accept your fate, like okay. I have. You're, you're not dead yet. Probably soon. All right, I'm gonna start by tapping three, and I'm gonna play Inspiring Overseer. Oh, okay. So it'll trigger twice, I will draw two, and I will gain two life. Oh. And because of our wedding rings, I will also draw two, and gain two life, thank you. All right, Ashlyn, so we're like on the same team, right? We're married, we're like friends. Oh, we're definitely teamed up. We like each other, okay, sweet. Jeez. Am I worried about Josh? Yes, I am. But I like that he wants to work together because his removal has been on point throughout the game. And if I have the choice, I want to be on his good side. You have to qualify because not all marriages are the same. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. This is a very happy marriage. Yeah, by all right, right, right. Right. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay. Until she annihilates you. <laughs> yeah, right. In a commander game, when two people start talking about how they're friends, it's usually bad news for everybody else at the table. Vorinclex and Elish Norn on the same team? That's what I would call a pretty unholy marriage. I feel left out. All right, I'm gonna play Amiria Shattered Skyclave as my land for turn, untapped, so I'll pay three. Ooh. All right, then I'm gonna pass Fiend Hunter. Oh. Ooh. And I can exile two things, because of Commander. Oh. I know, I could get rid of the Vorinclex, but we just established that we're friends. Because why kill that 22-22 Commander when you can divert it at the other two players that still need to be taken out of the game? The enemy of my enemy is my spouse. Okay, Jimmy, it's gonna be Neheb and Urbrask. Aww. I'll put Urbrask back into my command zone. 
and then Neheb will get exiled. Okay. Oh, this is like the 20th thing that Josh has gotten rid of on my board, and it's honestly just kind of devastating. I can't really keep up with that amount of removal, so I just gotta keep pushing through and hope for a miracle. Sorry, lady, but it is my only free attack, so I will swing at you with my Elish Norn for four. I will block with the Silver Smote Ghoul. It will die. It will die. And then I'll go to clean up. I do have eight cards, so I'll discard the Priest of Arcane Lore, which will go to exile because of Dalthy Voidwalker. Okay, and then this Cathars Crusade will just remain in exile. Go ahead, Jimmy. All right, I will untap, and I have an Outpost Siege trigger. So at the beginning of my upkeep, I'm gonna exile the top card of my library. It's a Dockside Extortionist. Dockside? But that card actually doesn't do anything because Elish Norton shuts it off right now. Oh, that's oh right. right. Dockside, borderline the most powerful card in the entire format. And Elish Norn just shuts it off because no enter the battlefield effects will trigger for my opponents. This is great. Dockside will do nothing. It's gonna trigger Lelia, but Vorinclex stops that trigger from happening. And then I'm going to go to my draw step and I will draw two cards for Howling Mine. Okay, I just have to find some way to stop Ashlyn. I'm hoping to find some kind of effect that can goad or just a board wipe that can get past everything. Okay, I am going to tap three mana and my war room. Pay one life and draw a card. Going to 29. That's gonna trigger my runic armosaur. So I will draw a card. Not bad. Jeez Louise. Okay, I didn't get anything with Outpost Siege and I didn't find anything with War Room. I desperately need anything that can equalize this board state out and just get me back in the game. I have one more try when I go to combat right now, so I'm really crossing my fingers. I'm gonna go to combat and Josh, I'm gonna swing an 8-8 and a Lelia at you. When I attack, Lelia is gonna trigger. I'll exile the top card of my library. It's a Blasphemous Act. <laughs> Ooh. Hmm, but vigor. But vigor. That's not good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Oh, it's a damage based board wipe. No! Ashlyn still has vigor, and that's gonna stop any damage that's done to her creatures and then just grow her commander even more. So, this is actually kind of the worst thing I could have found off the top. Jimmy, if you wanna cast that, go right on ahead. Yeah, okay, well that's gonna go into exile. So a 6-6 six, six and an 8-8 eight, eight coming at you, Josh. I will block the 8-8 eight, eight with Inspiring Overseer and Lelia with my Elish Norn. Go to damage? Yep, damage. Inspiring Overseer dies. Elish Norn and Lelia bounce off each other. And boing. And then because of Dalthy Voidwalker, there you go, lady. Thank you. You have access to basically two of the same card over there. I love that for me. I'm gonna tap five mana and I will cast another Urbrask, the original one. Oh. Urbrask with the hidden. More importantly, creatures your opponents control enter the battlefield tapped. Nice. This is terrible for me here because I'm open to be attacked by this 22 22 monstrosity. And now I'm anything that I put out there is gonna be tapped and I'm still gonna be wide open. And that's gonna do it for me. I'll pass my turn and these cards will remain in exile. All right, I will untap. You don't have your commander out. I get to draw both my cards. Yeah. Yes. All right, I'm gonna recast my commander for the third time. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. But she enters the battlefield tap because of Urbrask. Oof. There you go, test her. Nice. I see the writing on the wall here and I'm pretty sure this is over for me, but I'm glad I can at least get some damage to them on my way out. Okay, I'll untap and then draw two. Good old children, we'll deal four. four. Going to 18. All right, and then wedding ring, I will draw two as well and take four. Going to 19. Okay, let's see, we have a lot of mana. All right, the gloves are off now. I have a lot of complicated math to do to figure out how to maximize my mana here. It's possible that I'm gonna be able to take out multiple players this turn. All right, I'm just gonna play doubling season. Oh boy, with Warren Fox. So that's four times? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Nice. This card plus my commander is just a wombo combo. Anything that gets counters is now going to be quadrupled. And there's a lot more where that came from. All right, and then I'm gonna play Garuk Unleashed. Be warned, these woods are full of monsters. And because of my commander and doubling season, it's not gonna get just double the counters, it's gonna get quadruple the counters. So it'll have 16 loyalty counters on it. 
Oh my gosh. Instant ulti, but <laughs> how much is the ult? Yeah. <laughs> Seven. <laughs> you just ult twice, you know? Yeah. No big deal. Honestly, like of the planeswalkers she could play, this is one of the least scary because the ultimate is good, but slow. And one of the main things you're likely to get is something that has like an enter the battlefield effect, but the ETB wouldn't even happen. So I don't know. I'm oddly not that worried about an 18 loyalty Garrick. Who would ever say that? I'm going to tick up Garrick. Targeting the runic Armasaur. Oh, interesting. So it's an 11-14 with Trample now? Yes. Oh boy. And because of Warren Clex, when I plus Garrick, it'll go up to 18 loyalty. There's a lot of accounting going on over there. All right, and then I'm gonna play Oran Frostfang. <laughs> That's bad. Oran Frostfang is super scary. Because the way Death Touch and Trample work, you only have to assign lethal damage to creatures blocking you. So if you assign one damage with Death Touch, that satisfies the condition. And the other 21 damage from our commander will trample over now. I can definitely not stop all these tramplers from coming in and murdering me. So I'm pretty freaking dead. Beast with Spiral will trigger, so I will draw a card and lose two life. Wedding ring triggers when you draw, I will draw. And I will take two. And your Frostfang enters tap. Oh, that's right, because of Urbrask. Yeah. Uh, so with the three floating, I'll just go ahead and play the Sword of Truth and Justice. Oh. Protection from white. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like seeing the Sword of Truth and Justice because it gives protection from white, and I'm playing mono white. So she can basically make one of her creatures completely immune to my deck. I gotta be real careful now. I can't let her get that thing on the Vornclex. All right, and so now I'm going to move to combat. Jimmy, I'm going to send my Vornclex and Runic Armasaur at you. And then Lady, I'm gonna swing at you with the rest. All right, I feel like this is a done deal. Jimmy's not gonna survive this attack, neither is Lady, so after we get this cleaned up, I just have Josh to deal with. Well, the Dothy Voidworker can't block, so I have no blocks available, so I will take all of the damage. And then I'll die. And then I die to Ashlyn's green monstrous board. So both creatures have trample and death touch? Mm hmm. Wow, that's nasty. Okay, I'm dead no matter what, but if I double block Ashley's commander here, that means even more damage prevented by vigor and even more counters added to it. So, uh, hey Josh, you deal with this problem. All right, well, I'm going to double block your Vorinclex with both of my creatures. Uh, because of the Death Touch and Trample, I'm gonna assign one damage to both your Urbrask and your Illusion, and the rest will go through. All right, well, that means I'm gonna take 31 damage. And then I died to a ton of huge green creatures from Ashlyn Rose herself. There's a lot of trample damage. Okay, I'm dead. Okay, so Jimmy and Lady are knocked out, but I still have some triggers to resolve. So Warren Clux would have taken eight damage from the blockers, but because of Vigor, it takes no damage, but that turns into 32 counters because of my commander and doubling season. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so Warren Clux is how big? Uh, 54, 54. Sick. Jimmy really didn't need to give my commander 32 counters, but that's what happens when you mess with someone's board the entire game, Josh. It doesn't really matter to me, though, because at the current size it was, I was going to have to deal with it in some way. So now I still have to deal with it. Doesn't change anything. And then I also have five triggers from the Frost Fang because five of my creatures dealt combat damage. So I'm gonna draw five cards. Okay, and then because of Wedding Ring, I will also draw five. Hmm, all right, so my commander has 54 power. If I can give it protection from white, it's basically unblockable to Josh's entire board. So while I can't kill him this turn, I'm pretty sure I've got this in the bag next turn. I'm going to play a Tyrate Sanctum, and then I'm going to use that mana to equip the sword to Vorinclex. All right. That's your chance, Josh. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so I've been waiting for this moment. Ashlyn goes to equip the Sword of Truth and Justice to her commander, and it's gonna give it protection from white, so I have to stop it. It's very impressive what you've done, um, I and know. I appreciate uh, you as a, you know, a spouse and a partner and all that, but I have to play Cast Out, targeting the Vorinclex. And then because of Elishnorn, I do get a second target, so I will exile the Vigor as well. Can't do anything about that. <laughs> This just feels really bad. Both of those are basically my synergies. I'm still not out of this yet. I have a lot of mana. I just hope this is all he can do. All right, I'm gonna move to my cleanup step and I'm going to discard six cards. Wow. 
Okay. Do your worst. Doubling season. Planeswalker with 18 loyalty. Gaia's Cradle. <laughs> uh, sword that gives protection from my monocolored deck. I'm not feeling real great. I will untap everything, and I will draw one card, since this is my card for turn. Wedding Ring. You get a draw. Oh, that's right. Thanks. All right. I'm going to start by tapping three. I see your sword, and I raise you a sword of hearth and home. Oh, oh, green, white. Mm -hmm. So this sword gives protection from green. Ashlyn's playing mono green. So I feel pretty good once I get out of my commander. Not only is it pro green, but it also allows him to blink all of his removal pieces and completely wipe out my board. This is really, really, really bad. <laughs> Ooh, there's a lot Josh could do here. Yeah. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap to and move to equip the sword to my Elishnorn. Oh. I am tapped out, I can do nothing. Okay, so it's now a 6-9. It. Nice. Then I'm gonna go to combat. I'm gonna swing everything at you. Are you sure you don't wanna attack Garuk? Yeah, I'm sure. Just checking. All right, I cannot block, so I will take 10. Okay. Woo! So on that combat damage, I will get a Sword of Hearth and Home trigger. I'll search my library, I'll find a Plains. I'll put that on the battlefield. Wow. And then I will flicker the Fiend Hunter. Returns to the battlefield, and I will exile the Oren Frostfang and the Beast Whisperer. Well, that's good. Yeah, so Ashlyn is down to very low life total. I have a creature that is unblockable to her that represents lethal next turn. So all I gotta do is pick apart her board as much as possible, and next turn, I should be able to take it down. All right, then I'm gonna pay two. I'm gonna cast a Pearl Medallion. Not bad. And then I'm gonna pay four, because I have a discount on. now. And I'm gonna play Karmic Guide. Oh. <laughs> so that's going to trigger twice because of Elishnorn. And I'm going to bring back the wow. Skyclave Apparition. Oh, oh my gosh. And the Charming Prince. Oh no. <laughs> On ETB, Skyclave Apparition will target Rishkar and the Runic Armasaur. We're exiling? Exile both of those. Woo! And when Charming Prince enters the battlefield, it is going to target the Karmic Guide and the Regal Caracol. So those will both get exiled. Should have killed Josh. And then I will go to my end step. Karmic Guide and Regal Caracol will return to the battlefield. So I'll get four cats. And Karmic Guide will trigger twice, but I only have a Solemn Simulacrum in my graveyard, which will return and I'll get two more lands into play tapped. How am I supposed to win this? And then I'll move to clean up, and I have way too many cards, so I will discard four of them. Well, I did my best. Your cool. turn. So my only hope right now is that my commander has haste, and I still have the sword of truth and justice, so there is still a chance. Josh's life is low. I might be able to pump it up big enough to take him out. I just need to go for it. And then I will draw for turn. Wedding ring, I will draw one card. Okay, I'll tap eight and recast my commander. He's back! <laughs> All right, and then I'm gonna tap my Kyriatid for two, and I'm going to equip Sword of Truth and Justice to Foreign Clux. Okay, in response. Swords! I will cast Swords to Plowshares. Uh, before the equip happens and target Foreign Clux. Oh, rough. I don't think there's anything I can do about it. <sighs> yep, it's Swords to Plowshares. He swords my commander. The downside of this sequence is that I have to use Swords to Plowshares, which is going to gain Ashlyn some life and kind of get her out of the range of my Elishnorn. But the upside is that with the Wedding Rings, I'm also going to gain some life. So it's a good news, bad news thing. All right, fine. But before that resolves, I'm going to Beast Within targeting my Wedding Ring. Oh, no. <laughs> See you in court, Josh. <laughs> I guess this means it's really over? Uh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you know what? I think we should see other people. Oh, no, 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 it, it's not me. It's you, Josh. After much thought and careful consideration, Ashlyn Rose and I have made the difficult decision to separate as a couple. We go forward in life, uh, rooting for another, one another and with a commitment uh, to each other's success, but we're gonna do it separately. And because of my doubling season, I get two beast tokens out of it. Not bad. Yeah. And then the swords will resolve. Again, six life going to 12. 
If he's gonna swords my commander, he is not getting the life gain. I guess now my plan is just to make a bunch of blockers and hope Josh doesn't have enough damage on his side of the board to finish me off. Okay, and then I'm going to minus two Garrick, creating two three three beasts. Sure. All right, so with one of the floating mana, I'm gonna play a Land of War Elves, then I'll tap my Cradle, and then I'm going to play Avenger of Zendikar. Which does nothing because oh. of Elish. Mm. Oh, no ETB. It's the best that you can do right now. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah. Yeah, the second ability on Elish Norn to stop my opponent's enter the battlefield effects definitely made Jimmy not play a Dockside would have made a huge difference. Stops Avenger of Zendikar from making plant tokens. And who knows what creatures my opponents didn't play because they weren't going to get the triggers. So yeah, while I've been focused on the doubling of my own abilities, how it's stopping my opponents is maybe equally as powerful. And I don't have enough mana to equip it to the sword, but I do have blockers, so that's that's what I've got. It's a lot of blockers. Go ahead, Josh. So I'm untapping on this turn, and I really want to win the game here. I don't want to let Ashlyn get back on her feet. But she did do a good job of repopulating her board. She has a lot of blockers. That means I'm going to need some extra removal. On my upkeep, I have an echo trigger on the Karmic Guide. I will pay it. Then before my draw step, still in my upkeep, I'm going to activate my Hall of Heliod's Generosity, and I will target to the On Thin Ice in my graveyard, and that will go on top of my library. Ugh, jeez. And then I'll go to my draw step and draw my card for the turn. And then I'm going to pay one, and I will cast the On Thin Ice. Two triggers? Yep, two triggers. I will target one of my snow-covered planes, and I will get rid of the Avengers and a car and one of the beast tokens. Sounds good. Exiled? Exiled. And then I'm gonna tap three, and I'm gonna play Grasp of Fate. Same thing, I get two targets. Uh, I'll get rid of two beast tokens. Goodbye, friends. And then, Ash, I will attack with everything. Can I attack with your pearl? <laughs> except my Pearl Medallion, which is not a creature, it's not a pack. <laughs> All right, well then, I'm going to block the two biggest creatures you have. And you got it. Dead. Well, I guess it is true. Till death do us part. <coughs> All right, good game, everybody. Good game, good game, good game, good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. Good game. And then I swung out with my full force, and I showed them who's the greater Praetor. I win! I love the idea of playing a monocolored deck on game nights. It shows it's powerful, and to add to the power, we got to play with Praetors. Yeah, this was a really cool game. It's fun to explore the dark side and play as the bad guys. It's kind of fun to have every commander riff on that symmetrical design idea that all the Praetors have. One person's commander answered another, and then that person's commander answered another one. It was this cool interaction of all of us kind of counterbalancing each other. We've seen the Praetors over the past year keep in and out of the planes all over. There seems to be a really big master plan going on here, and I can't wait to see where it goes. All right! Yeah! Ooh, I thought I was it gonna go all the- It has been gonna, a while! Yeah, I thought I was gonna go the whole year without winning a game. That was my I first know. win of the year, so I'm glad. Nice, nice. I think I only have one win of the year, too. All right, that's us. All right, we did Hold it. Hold it down. Cool. Oh, man. Yeah, that Elishnorn, that new Elishnorn? Insanity. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about All Will Be One. It looks very, very cool. I'm glad yeah. they let us play with at least one of the cards from one. Yeah, Mono White has had quite the kick this year. I mean, Rachel won with a Mono White deck as well on extra turn. Yeah, really that's cool. two wins for Mono White. Who would have thought? Yeah, who would have thought? Talk to us seven years ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but of course, if you want to pick up that Elish Norn, pre order it, or get any of the cards that are coming out in the new Phyrexia set, there's a lot of sweet stuff coming out. You got to head on over to cardkingdom.com slash command. Again, thanks to their sponsorship, we're able to make shows like Game Nights exist. And thanks to you using our affiliate link, you're also helping us. And by virtue of that, you're creating more sweet content for yourself and getting the cards that you need so you can play games with your groups at home, level up your decks, buy all the cards you need for your deck to fill it out in one place, get it to in one shipment, cardkingdom.com slash command. We love them so much. They've got great customer service and a huge inventory. You're definitely going to be able to find what you want and just get on your way to building a brand new deck or leveling up the one you already have. Again, cardkingdom.com slash command. Do it, do it. 
Yeah, and then, of course, once you get your hands on those cards, you really are going to want to protect them. Ultra Pro is the game accessories brand that Jimmy and I, we trust our own collection safety to. Mm -hmm. They really do make the best stuff to protect your game pieces. You're going to want Eclipse sleeves, Satin Tower deck boxes, awesome playmats, Eclipse dice. They even can help you adorn your game room. They have things oh, like yeah. wall scrolls. So cool. Yeah, whatever you need, Ultra Pro's got it. And they also have the licensing agreements with Wizards of the Coast so that you can get the specific artwork that you want on your playmats, on your sleeves to make your battlefield or your battle station look really, really cool. So again, ultrapro.com slash command is their website. You can buy from them directly. Of course, if you have an LGS, you buy Ultra Pro product from them. That will support us as well, and we encourage everyone to do that. But one of the good things about their website is there's often all kinds of sales and discounts, and you can find really, really good deals there. It's something that I check at least once a week just to mm -hmm. see what they've got going on because I've found some amazing deals on stuff. Yeah, I'm on their email newsletter. I get a notification instantly when something goes on sale, and sometimes it's some really stuff. I'm just like, I needed another binder or a deck box or and something. And it's like 50% off. Yeah, yeah, and you're like, oh, sweet, I am in for this. Yep. Uh, yeah, so definitely check that out. Of course, Ultra Pro also gives away product every single time we have a game. That's episode, we sign the playmats, we send it out to you, our loyal listeners and viewers. And all you have to do to enter is super simple because you can choose one of three ways or do all three or any combination. The first is on Twitter. Go ahead and just tweet out a link to this episode that you're watching right now. Make sure you include the hashtag Game Nights. That's Nights with a K with your tweet. Say whatever you want. And Blam will send that out into the atmosphere. That counts as one entry. If you're on Facebook, head on over to our Facebook page. Uh, and go ahead and navigate your way to the post that's sharing this episode. In the comments of that episode, just comment, tag a friend. And finally, if you're on Instagram, you don't even need to post about the episode. You just have to use the hashtag Game Nights in any post that you make. Typically, uh, we prefer this to be about magic. <laughs> uh, that's three ways to enter. If you enter all three ways, that's three entries. You can also just enter one way or none at all. But if you want to win some of that sweet swag, the closing date for these entries will be one week from the release of this episode. After that, no more entries will be counted and the announce uh, winners will be announced on our social medias. Yeah, once we announce the winners, you can no longer enter to win because the winners have already been announced. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't forget, we still have the Kickstarter sleeves going on. Link in the show notes. Get your hand on those. You only got a couple more days. Uh, if you're lucky, if you're watching this late, it's probably already closed. All uh, right. Yeah. Thanks, everybody, for watching. And let us just say, because this is our last Game Nights episode of the year, thanks for watching all year long. Thank you for watching all of our our content. Uh, we hope you enjoyed everything we've put out, and we're looking really forward to 2023. Yeah, I hope this uh, completes your year in a great way. <laughs> what does that mean, Jimmy? I have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> All weird. right. Thanks, everyone. Peace. Bye-bye. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do